begins on page 21 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant to a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. 
men. Psalm 145, verses 1 through 13, can be found on page 521 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will magnify thee, O God, my King, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee, and praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and marvelous, worthy to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another, and declare thy power. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship, thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works, so that men shall speak of the might of thy marvelous acts. And I will also tell of thy greatness. The memorial of thine abundant kindness shall be showed, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving unto every man, and his mercy is over all his works. All thy works praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. They show the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power, that thy power, thy glory, and mightiness of thy kingdom might be known unto men. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all ages. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson begins at the ninth verse of the ninth chapter of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Here ends the first lesson. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
second lesson begins at the 25th verse of the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Here ends the second lesson. Savior. Amen. 
Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon this whole land. And so rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and all others in authority, that they, knowing whose ministers they are, may above all things seek thy honor and glory. And that we and all the people, duly considering whose authority they bear, may faithfully and obediently honor them according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> o God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men. If thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or state. that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we then unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory world without end. Amen. The most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, who has created man in thine own image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom, help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice among men and nations. To the glory of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, whose fatherly care reacheth to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech thee graciously to behold and bless those whom we love, now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to thee, may be bound together by thy love in the communion of the Holy Spirit, and in the fellowship of thy saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Heavenly Father, we beseech thee to have mercy upon all thy children who are living in mental darkness. Restore them to strength of mind and cheerfulness of spirit, and give them health and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> uh, one of the fascinating things about early childhood uh, is, is children's acquisition of language. And if you've been around babies and young children and you've ever tried to learn another language as an adult, you'll know what I mean. Uh, it's, it's a wonder to see that, that while for us as adults, <clears throat> language learning uh, means intensive study and, and, and rote memory and, and really an uphill academic exercise, children pick it up uh, by being around it. I think of this when I read this passage in Matthew 11, and I think something like this idea is what ties together verse 25 uh, about what God has revealed being hidden from the wise and understanding, but revealed to little children, and verse 27, uh, where Jesus talks about his special knowledge of the Father that he has as God's Son. <clears throat> One of the recurring phenomena in, in the Gospels is, is our, our coming across people who, who, in theory, should know God well. Uh, religious leaders, well-educated and well-read people, familiar with the biblical text and, and, and the intricate traditions of Israelite worship, but who are completely missing the boat on what God is up to Christ. And so showing themselves up as not really knowing God after all. And on the other hand, uh, coming across all the people that Jesus is choosing to spend time with, uh, to the alarm of the other higher ranking society people, uh, the poor, the outcasts, the, the sinners, all the wrong sorts of people. People who are being forgiven and trusting Christ and learning to love and so showing themselves up as knowing and, and being a part of what God is, is up to, knowing God. I think part of the point is that people come to know God not only by study, um, but in the way that a son knows his father and, and learns language um, by being with him, by listening to him, uh, learning from him, and, and imitating him. That's what these little children, these regular people, were doing with Jesus. They were coming to know God the Father as revealed by the Son. The only way, Jesus says, it is possible to know the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and any to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. <clears throat> Another of Jesus' points, I think, and, and something else that runs through every part of this passage, but also broadly through all of the New Testament, is the surprise of the Gospel. Um, point for point here, everything that Jesus says about what God is doing through Him is exactly the reverse of what we might expect. Uh, certainly the opposite of what many of his contemporaries expected. Um, the expectation that the so-called wise and the so-called understanding would naturally know God more closely, uh, have more of a grip on what he's revealed than simpler people. Uh, it seems to have been an expectation, but in fact, God has, has gone after the, the simple, uh, the so-called unwise and ignorant, regular people, and revealed himself to them. His particular focus on and, and solidarity with the downtrodden is something we see emphasized in our reading from Zechariah also. Uh, the good news is for the freedom of those in captivity. Um, for hope for the hopeless, for restoration for the broken. 
one might have thought, and now looking at verse 27, that obedience to the law, adherence to the tradition, um, education, status, uh, might have meant in and of themselves having a grip on Revelation. But, but it isn't something, Jesus says, Revelation, that, that anyone by any means can, can grab a hold of. God's work and His Word must be revealed. And, and they're revealed through Christ. One might have thought that, that wearing a yoke would be uh, burdensome, that, that, that anyone called to follow and learn from a master would be weighed down with labor. Certainly this was the pattern of life under the law and, and the traditions we just mentioned. But strangely, surprisingly, Jesus says his yoke is for the burden. Uh, and is light and will mean for those who take it upon themselves rest uh, we're familiar with these words in this part of the passage because uh, in the communion service in the prayer book they are read uh, after the confession and assurance of pardon uh, as what the prayer book calls comfortable words and the prayer book means uh, not just that these words are comfortable in, in our usual sense of that word, that they make us feel better, but in the more literal etymological sense of the word, comfort with strength, strength-giving words. Uh, when Jesus tells us sinners to come to him and, and, and that he will, to use the prayer book's phrasing, refresh us, yeah, it does make us feel better, but it should likewise strengthen us, build us up, help us to stand and walk. The concept of rest, entering God's rest, <clears throat> plays a major role in the early chapters of the letter to the Hebrews. Uh, there, the writer argues that for the children of Israel who had been led by Moses out of Egypt, their hardness of heart in the wilderness risked uh, rendering them unable to enter God's rest. Um, but finally, they had no real rest anyway, uh, and, and, and their story was open-ended. It looks back not only to the Sabbath rest prescribed in, in, in the law as an echo of God's own rest after creation, picturing a pattern at work and, and creation, followed by refreshment and peace. But, but it looks forward to, beyond itself, uh, ultimately, as the writer of Hebrews explains, to Christ, to one in whom God's will for his creation and, and the rhythms of human life are perfectly pictured, uh, the only one in whom we may enter God's rest, that is, enter what God has for us, a place of peace, a place where we are free from sin. So uh, may we be with Christ as a son is with his father and, and so come to know the father. May we find that while the gospel is surprising, is not how we might have done things, nonetheless it is good news. And may we come to Christ, we who are burdened uh, and, and, and find rest. Uh, in the words of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16, Stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, and walk in it and find rest for your souls.